The war on drugs has absolutely nothing to do with drugs. It's about power, it's about control, coercion. It used to be that they would have a debate about drug policy, and at one podium would be standing the police officer or the judge, and at the other podium would be the crazy, hippie, dopey guy who says that drugs should be legalized. You tended to want to side with the professional. And then we created LEAP. Legalizing drugs, that's the message a new billboard in the metro is advertising. And you might be surprised to hear who's funding it all. Well, the group funding the billboard is actually comprised of current and former law enforcement officers. An unlikely pair now backing efforts to legalize marijuana in Colorado, a retired Denver police lieutenant and a former Lafayette judge. It may be hard to believe, but this is the face of legalizing drugs. And now we have changed the dynamic of that debate. John? The way we got rid of the crime associated with and, and it would allow local governments to tax it. It's getting support from an unlikely source former members of law enforcement. But first tonight, former prosecutors, former judges, those people who once enforced the law now say that marijuana should be legal. Former Yuba County Sheriff's Deputy Nate Bradley says resources wasted on marijuana bus could be better spent elsewhere. Should marijuana be legal? It also has a law enforcement divide. The debate is pitting badge against badge. Tonight, the legalize it side has some reinforcements. So this is it comes from some folks that might surprise you. They're going around the state with messages like the one delivered to this Rotary Club meeting in Federal Way. Our war on drugs has failed. James Doherty is a speaker for a group known as LEAP, or Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. He's a former prosecutor who wants voters to approve Initiative 502. I think there are a lot of parallels between what happened here on Tuesday and what eventually happened in Prohibition uh, back in the 20s in the United States, and it started state by state. Neil Franklin, executive director of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, uh, a three-decade-long career in law enforcement. Uh, sir, thank you very much for your time tonight. You speak with uncommon authority on this subject. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. That is what LEAP brought to the discussion, and that's why we have changed the discussion forever on this issue. With speakers in over 80 countries, LEAP's credibility and impact are going global. We put together a declaration and three resolutions to submit to the UN Narcotics uh, Control Group. Uh, we got a, a lot of things in there that would have never been in there had we not been there. And all about human rights, all about uh, harm reduction, the fact that all drug use isn't necessarily uh, drug abuse, you know. This is a perfect example of why law enforcement against prohibition has an organization of former police officials, criminal justice professionals, is so important to the contribution towards this, this caravan. LEAP has also expanded its scope to work with those most affected by the war on drugs, as well as those willing to oppose it. People don't expect cops and clergy to be on this side of the issue, but in fact we are. We cannot duck this issue. I couldn't duck it anymore. I couldn't sweep if I wasn't out advocating to get rid of the war on drugs. You can't get to in the war on drugs unless you end prohibition. They couldn't do it with alcohol, and you can't do it with drugs. They are arrested in wholesale numbers. Corner clearing operations in disregard of the Constitution are routine in my town. We're under our present governor when he was mayor, 27,000 black people on average were arrested each year without being charged with crimes. Four decades this year in the war on drugs, over a trillion dollars. There's our health care budget. Since 1985, the rate of incarceration has increased by 800 percent. 800 percent for black women. Just, even in Brazil, we have in the, in the northeast there is a marijuana production, mm -hmm. and there are children working there, and you don't have labor laws if it's in any, any legal market. These are actions that are happening all over the country. Police officers and organizers on the grassroots level are all coming together to say, let's 
put an end to this um, really disastrous failed war on drugs. My name is Karen Hawks. I'm a mother, a Girl Scout leader, a Sunday school teacher, and I served as a Massachusetts State Trooper for 13 years. In Mexico, 10,000 children have been orphaned by violence caused by the illegal drug market, not by the drugs themselves. A negative drug test for marijuana on a probation for shoplifting. Now she's going back to state prison. Now she's giving her children away to somebody that's going to fail and she's going to lose her children. Is that an appropriate penalty? Is, it, is, for, that, is for, that protecting our kids? Is, is that, that law protecting, protecting our, our kids? kids? When LEAP speakers talk about the distorting, corrupting influence of prohibition on their profession, it is from firsthand experience. We have changed. Law enforcement is no longer about being a peace officer and serving our community. It's about policing people. It engenders a disrespect for a profession that I loved. And uh, our communities don't respect us and they view us as occupiers. Going after DUI suspects, enforcing domestic violence and child abuse laws, that's what makes police work noble. That's what police work ought to be directed at. Not once in 20 years did a parent ever turn their child in for drugs. The last thought in the world was to turn this over to the police. They found other ways to deal with that problem. And we as a society should find other ways. And the core of those other ways is that even the heartbreak of addiction should be treated as a personal or public health issue, never as a criminal one. Insight is part of a program to bring people who are marginalized out of society back into society, back into the light of healthcare. Take your story yeah. back to the state yeah. so, so people can understand that this is a medical situation, this yeah. is a health issue. The results of that are amazing. There hasn't been a single overdose death there in 15 years. Imagine all the lives that are saved. AIDS and hepatitis in that country dropped to the lowest rate of any country in Europe because they're not sharing needles anymore. Crime was cut by 60%. That's the most important. Yeah. If, if American policemen stand up and say these things um, and put them on the, on the web and, and have billboards on, on freeways, so, you know, that is really going to help because you know, there we are in, in the lion's den, if you like. And these people have guts. Um, I respect that. When I go somewhere to speak, I always make it clear that uh, I am a member of LEAP, uh, and that, that is where I'm coming from. If you use that money to create programs that give people hope for the future, instead of removing all their hope by arrest and imprisonment, can you imagine how many fewer drug users we'd have? It's going to take all of us in order to do it, and um, I just thank God for this setting and being a part of it.